two topics that are, are very interesting, I think, to NERSC users, uh, Python usage and GPU use. And uh, Daniel Magala is a uh, NERSC NISAP postdoc who is uh, working with both, and he's going to tell us a bit about uh, CUPI at NERSC. Hi, can you see my slides okay? Yes, looking good. Okay, uh, yes, thank you for having me. Um, I'm a, a NISAP postdoc working with the Dark Energy Spectroscopic Instrument. Um, and today I'm here to uh, help those of you um, who have Python applications um, get started, get off the ground on Perlmutter GPUs by kind of telling a little bit about uh, our story of porting the, the DESI spectral extraction pipeline um, to use GPUs in, in preparation for, for Perlmutter. Perlmutter. Um, so just to give you a bit of a quick background on the actual DESI spectral extraction code, um, it uses a lot of, uh, it's implemented in Python, uses a lot of special functions like exponentials, um, Hermit polynomials, Legendre polynomials, um, and operates on lots of um, uh, array, array-like data structures. Uh, they get images from their telescope in New Mexico. They send them over to NERSC and they process them nightly. And then they also reprocess years worth of images um, every few months. And so there's a lot of matrix op um, operations and linear algebra going on in their scientific pipeline. Um, and it's all, as I mentioned, it's implemented in Python, um, leveraging the uh, NumPy and SciPy libraries for linear algebra, which often wrap um, lower level uh, routines from, from BLAST or LPAC. Um, they also leverage Numba for some, um, some specialized functions so that they're um, compiled and they, they run a little bit faster than native Python code. Um, and then for scaling, um, for both multi-core and multi-node scaling, their application uses um, MPI via uh, MPI for Pi. Um, so we decided to um, port their application to, to um, GPUs using the CuPy uh, and NumbaCuda libraries. And since they're already, the developers are already very familiar with NumPy and SciPy, um, we could use those libraries um, to translate uh, directly uh, many, many pieces of their code. Um, and since those APIs are compatible, the developers on Desi would, would be familiar with the APIs of CuPy uh, and NumbaCuda. Um, so they'd be able to further develop and maintain the application. Um, and so on the right here, I'm, there's a, a bit of a a speed up relative to the Edison baseline that we used to kind of track progress during this um, this work. Um, and I just want to mention that it wasn't like a straight, you know, find and replace NumPy with CuPy. Um, it was kind of an iterative process where we would port pieces of the application, test the code, profile the code, um, track our progress. So it was, it was not, it's not something that we just, you know, hammered out in, in one, one weekend or one month or something like that. It's kind of an, an iterative process, learning, learning about the GPUs um, and learning what, what changes we could make to um, fully utilize the GPUs that were available to us. Um, but at the end of this work so far, we've seen a 25x uh, improvement in the, the per node throughput of data, which is how DESI kind of tracks um, kind of a figure of merit for this work that Desi uses to track progress um, using the A100 GPUs on the, the GPU Perlmutter nodes compared to a, an Edison CPU baseline. Um, so getting started with GPUs, you actually have many options. So some, some of these were actually mentioned in the, the previous talk, like, um, like TensorFlow, PyTorch, and, and JAX. So there, there's a lot of different um, uh, libraries out there that will give you access to the GPUs in, in Python. Um, and many of these are actually um, interoperable. They can work well with each other. Um, there's some standards and some efforts in the community to, to make sure that um, these different libraries are able to kind of efficiently share um, array-like objects. So if you want to do something in, in one of these libraries, you can, you can bring, you can also bring in a different library and you don't have to keep 
changing the data format and, and all of that. Um, so as I mentioned earlier, we chose Kupai and Numbacuda because they're kind of natural extensions of the libraries that um, Desi was already leveraging in, in their Python code. So what is Kupai? Um, so Kupai, essentially, it's, it's trying to implement the, the NumPy API, which is kind of like the foundation of of a lot of scientific computing in Python. Um, but it, it lets you kind of work with um, array-like objects on the GPU. Um, and it implements uh, many, many features in NumPy and SciPy. Um, and then under the hood, what Kupy is doing is um, when you call a function, um, it compiles um, the CUDA kernel uh, on the fly and then caches that result. So when you reuse that in the future, you don't have to recompile that again. So it's kind of a, a form of that um, just-in-time compilation. Um, so here's a long list. So <laughs> we don't have to go through all of these, but basically the, the most of the functionality of, of NumPy is available to you using Kupy. There are some, some differences and you'd have to go and look at the, the Kupy documentation um, for, for a list of what those are. But for the most part, many of the features are in NumPy are implemented in, in Kupy um, and let you leverage a lot of things, especially like the, the, the special um, CUDA libraries like KuBlas and, and KuSolver. Um, a lot of the, the linear algebra routines are, are kind of wrappers around those, just like NumPy and SciPy wrap um, the lower level uh, BLAS and LaPlaque libraries. Um, as I mentioned, there's also a lot of um, support for, for many functions in SciPy. Um, this list is from, from the, it's like the first, uh, one of the welcome pages on the Kupy docs. I will mention that not all of the functions in, in SciPy are actually implemented in all these domains. So, but they do have a comparison table that shows you what's available and what's, what's not. So how do you use Kupy on, on Perlmutter? Um, so for the most up-to-date information, it's best to check the, the nurse docs. So there's, a, there's a, a page that's being kind of actively maintained, um, this using Python and Perlmutter link, the page that I've linked to at the bottom. Um, and if you also have trouble, you can always open a ticket at help.nurse.gov. Um, but it's essentially as simple as uh, logging into Perlmutter um, making sure that your CUDA and Python modules are loaded, creating a, a new uh, environment for this for, for working for installing Kupy into. Um, and the, the only the main gotcha is making sure that you in, install uh, a version of, of Kupy that's compatible with whatever CUDA module is loaded. So right now the default CUDA module on on Perlmutter is 11.3.0. Um, so when you pip install Kupy, you should make sure it's Kupy dash CUDA 113. Um, and then you can just import Kupy as CP, similar to how you might import NumPy as NP. Um, and then you can start um, computing uh, on the GPU. So um, the, one of the main things to think about when you're first getting started on the, on the GPU and using in Kupy is kind of having this, this concept that you have um, objects that are the, where the, the memory resides on the host or the CPU and the GPU objects reside on, on or other objects that reside on the, the GPU. Um, and so, sorry, is there a question? Oh, sorry, just five minute warning. Oh, okay, thank you. Um, yeah, so that's one thing to keep in mind as you get started. Um, so you might want to, um, one thing to be aware of is that transferring um, data between the host and GPU can, can be uh, expensive performance-wise. Um, it, so it's, it's, it's important to keep, in, keep that in mind uh, when you're getting started and if you can minimize the amount of data that you're transferring back from the, the, the host to the device. So when should you use Kupy versus NumPy? So here I've, I've just done a simple thing where I kind of create two, um, two, by, uh, two, two dimensional arrays uh, using random numbers, A and B here. And then we have just a simple function that, that adds them together element wise. Um, and the, the blue line here kind of shows the, the amount of time it takes to run this operation. 
in, in NumPy for various sizes of, of 2D matrices. And then the orange line is um, the equivalent, but using CuPy. Um, and so for smaller sizes, so you know below a um, hundred or a few hundreds of, of, of elements, um, Num NumPy is actually much faster and isn't until you get to much larger uh, array sizes where, where CuPy is, um, is a few orders of magnitude faster at doing such an operation. Um, so it's not as simple, again, you don't wanna just translate all of your code directly to um, using, you don't wanna replace all NumPy operations with CuPy. Um, it, it's important to be aware of, of when CuPy will be useful um, performance-wise, and that's, that's typically at, at larger array sizes. So it's always important to, to measure these sorts of things um, as, as you start to use the GPU as well. Um, and then here's just another example. Instead of um, adding those two matrices, um, taking the, uh, doing a matrix multiplication there. And so there, there's, yeah, you kind of see that, that trade-off happens at a, at a smaller size because it's a different, different operation. Um, and then, as I mentioned before, um, you can sort of mix and match and, and combine these different libraries. So, so here I just kind of have an example of really combining, you know, code that's using the, the CuPy API, uh, NumbaCuda just-in-time compilation, um, and also using the there's a there's a really cool feature of, of NumPy, this array function protocol, which allows you to actually just use the, the NumPy API on, um, on objects that support the NumPy's a array function, which the, the CuPy uh, ND arrays do. Um, so on the right here, um, I'm kind of initializing uh, an array on the GPU device uh, using CuPy, and then we're passing that array to uh, a kernel that's um, compiled using NumbaCuda, and then we're using um, the NumPy API on the resu result of that, um, the NumbaCuda uh, result. Um, and then, as I mentioned in our, um, our DESI work, an important piece of, of porting the application to the GPU was making measurements and, and profiling the, the application to figure out, you know, strategically what, what what we should work on next to get the most um, bank for our buck um, time-wise. Um, and so one way, one really helpful way of doing that is to profile the application using uh, NVIDIA's Nsight systems um, and using the, uh, the CUDA NVTX markers um, as well to, to kind of really make it a lot easier to, to label the, the timelines that come out of the profiler. Um, so we can kind of label the regions that are of interest to us. Um, and so, yeah, there's a bunch of different ways to do that um, using the, the CuPy handles. Um, and then here, yeah, I just have an example of how to actually run the uh, ENSYS profile with your Python application. Um, and then here's quickly kind of just what that ENSYS system profile looks like. And so, um, the area marked in the orange box is kind of what we get out of the NVTX markers. And so we can kind of go and study that and kind of figure out what we want to do next after profiling our application, trying to figure out where, where we should focus our um, development efforts. So there's many more uh, topics in, in CuPy. You can go to the CuPy documentation to, to, to dive into some of those more advanced topics. Um, and that's all I have. So thank you.